This is the sixth section of chapter 12 on differentiation, and this section is on gradients, tangents, and normals. Okay, well, the first thing just to draw your attention to is when we've got y equals something or f of x equals something, what happens here is we put the x coordinate in and out pops the y coordinate. However, when we've worked out the derivative dy dx or f dash of x, when we put the x coordinate in, what comes out is the gradient. Now, you'll remember from the chapter on straight line graphs, this y minus y1 equals mx minus x1. Now, what does that mean? How's this useful? Well, if the gradient comes out of dy dx or f dash of x, it can go in here. And then if we've got an x and a y coordinate, we can find the equation of a tangent if we know its gradient. Now we can also do something which is called finding the equation of a normal. Now a normal is just perpendicular at right angles to the tangent, right angles to tangent. So if the gradient of our tangent is m, the gradient of our normal is negative 1 over m. Now, remember, a normal is just a straight line. So by using y minus y1, m x minus x1, we can find the equation of a normal. It's just m will be um, this negative 1 over m rather than the value of m that we get from dy dx or f dash of x. OK, let's try some examples then. Example 10, find the equation of the tangent to the curve y equals x cubed minus 3x squared plus 2x minus 1 at the point 3, 5. So we're finding the equation of a tangent at this point. So let me just write down the steps in doing this. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to find the gradient function. We need to find a derivative. Once we found a gradient function, we can then substitute in this value of x equals 3 to find the gradient at 3. So the next step would be to find the gradient at the point 3 or at x equals 3. We don't need the y coordinate at this point. So this will give us, once we've done this, this will give us the gradient of the tangent at this point x equals 3. Once we've got the gradient of the tangent, we can then find the equation of the tangent, the equation of the tangent by using y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. Now we've got m, we would have worked out here, and y1 and x1 we've got from here. So let's go through all of these steps. So we've got y equals x cubed minus 3x squared plus 2x minus 1. We want the gradient function, that's the derivative. So dy dx, that's going to be 3x squared minus 6x plus 2. So that's the gradient function. We now want to find out what is the gradient at x equals 2. In other words, we want to find dy dx at x, not x equals 2, x equals 3. And I said 3 and I wrote down 2. x equals 3 and y3 because that's where the tangent is at x equals 3. So now we substitute 3 into dy dx. So that will be 3 times by 3 squared minus 6 times by 3 plus 2. Now what does that give us? 3 times by 9, which is 27, minus 6 times by 3, which is 18. So now we're left at 9 plus 2, which gives us 11. So what have we got so far? This 11 is the gradient of the tangent to this curve when x equals 3. Right, so we now got to this point here, we can now find the equation of the tangent. So we'll just write using y minus y1 equals mx minus x1. 
that will give us y minus, now our y1 is going to be 5 and our x1 is going to be 3. So we've got our coordinate there. So y minus 5 equals m, that's the gradient of the tangent, which is 11, and then x minus 3. Now, it says the equation of a tangent, here it is. I can leave it in that form. That's the final answer. But what we'll do is we'll multiply it out and maybe we'll leave it in the form y equals mx plus c. So y um, equals, and then I'll expand the brackets, 11x minus 33, and then the five that I'm adding to both sides. So y equals 11x and negative 33 plus five will leave me with negative 28. But there's no reason why I couldn't leave it like that, like this, or I could even do it in the form um, ax plus by plus c equals zero. And if I did that, I'd have 11x minus y minus 28 equals zero. So I can leave it in any one of those forms. This form here, this form here, y equals mx plus c, or this form here. Example 11, find the equation of the normal to the curve with equation y equals 8 minus 3 root x at the point where x equals 4. So let's write down the steps. So we need to find a gradient function. That's the derivative. Once we found a gradient function, we need to find the gradient when x equals 4. So gradient at x equals 4. Now, because it's a normal, it's perpendicular to the gradient at 4. So we then need to do negative 1 over m to find the perpendicular gradient. Once we've done that, we can uh, find the equation of the normal, equation of normal. So that's where we use y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. So we'll have our value of m. We'll have the value of x, which is 4, but we won't have the value of y. Now, how can we find the value of y? We can put 4 into the equation to find y1. So I'll just put here, put x equals 4 into equation, and that will give us y. Right, so now I've got the steps. Let's go through them. So step number one, let's find a gradient function. y equals 8 minus 3 root x. So before I find a gradient function, I need to write it as x to the power something. So minus 3x to the power half, that's the same as square root x. Now we can find dy dx. So if we do that, what happens to constants? They disappear. Then I'm going to do a half times by 3. So I'll end up with negative at 3 over 2x and take 1 away from the power. So power is negative a half. So I now need to find the value of dy dx at x equals 4. So I just substitute the 4 into this. So I will have minus 3 over 2 times by 4 to the power negative a half. So that's minus 3 over 2. Now 4 to the power negative a half is 1 over the square root of 4. So 1 over the square root of 4, which is 2. So if we work that out, we end up with negative 3 over 4. OK, so this would be the gradient of the tangent. So negative 3, three, three quarters gradient of tangent. We want the gradient of the normal. So we want the negative reciprocal of this. So that's going to be 4 over 3. So 4 over 3 is gradient of normal. OK, so now we've got the m part there that we need. We've got x1, which is 4. Now we need to put x equals 4 into this to find the y coordinate. OK, so y coordinate at x equals 4. So that will be y equals 8 minus 3 times by the square root of x, which is 4. So 
that will give us 8 minus, this will just become 3 times 2, so 8 minus 6 will leave us with 2. So we have this coordinate, 4, 2. This is the point where the normal is. So now we've got our x1 and y1, we can now finish it off and find the equation of the normal. So y minus y1, which we worked out to be 2, equals m, that's 4 over 3, times by x minus x1, which is 4. And we can leave our answer in that form. That's an equation of the normal. It doesn't say which form it needs to be in. Let's go on. Let's write it in the form y equals mx plus c. So I'll have y equals 4 over 3x minus now 4 over 3 times by 4 is going to be 16 over 3 then we add 2 to both sides so we we'll have y equals 4 over 3x and then negative 16 over 3 plus 2 just working this out in my calculator gives us negative 10 over 3 so we can leave it in that form or we can write it in a form um, ax plus by plus c equals zero so to do that we'd want to multiply everything by three because we want integers so 3y equals 4x minus 10 and just spin everything around so we've got 4x minus 3y minus 10 equals zero okay so you can see there's quite a few different steps in this question and when you do these questions um, particularly when you start doing them yourself it's useful maybe to write out the steps so you know what you're doing at each step and you don't miss anything out so you should now be able to do exercise 12f on pages 269 to 270 in the textbook